So here's the switch that is putting out the fader event data that will turn insert slot one on and off on a software instrument channel strip. The next step in the process is to create another monitor object that is going to act as the receptacle for all the other fader data that will turn off and on all of the other insert slots and then send it to the channel strips. So I'll label this two channel strips and then make this connection between the two monitor objects, ensuring that the output of my little button right here will appear over here to be sent to all the software instrument channel strips whose effects inserts I want to turn on and off. It's just passing the information along, really doing nothing but that. Now we get to the fun stuff. We get to work with transformers. Transformers are the brains in Logic's MIDI environment. To open them, you just double click on them and the transformer window appears. And it looks very much like the transform function window in Logic's editors, except that this transform function works in real time. It has a mode. You can pick all kinds of different modes of operation. And it has conditions, how it selects the MIDI data and operations, which is what it does to the MIDI data. So we're going to add one to data byte one, which is the event number when you're dealing with fader or controller data. Next, I'll name it add one, which is exactly what it's doing. So let's take a look and see if it is in fact adding one to the event number. So from the malt monitor, I'll go into add one and take it to the two channel strips monitor. So we have 57 here. And if I follow the data, that 57 will appear here. And then that same data will be malted through that new transformer right here. And one will be added to the event number because that's how I programmed the transformer. You see, data byte one is the MIDI event number and data byte two is the MIDI event value when working with controller or fader events. Let's see if it works. Actually, let me reset the monitor objects by clicking on them. 57, zero, because that was sent right to there. And adding one creates another event, 58, zero. And if I click on the FX bypass one more time, I get 57, one and 57 1 and 58 1. So our transformer is working perfectly. Let's test it out on a channel strip. So somehow I have to hook this whole thing up to a channel strip. Hmm. Let me show you a cool thing. I'm going to go to the mixer layer. I'm going to select a channel strip that has some plugins in it. This one will do. Now holding down Option, I'll switch layers. And what happens is, is that any selected object, when you hold down option, will be moved to that layer. And there it is. And this little cable termination meant it was connected to something, but I'm going to disconnect it for now. And now we're going to test this. But before I do it, I want to show you how things work kind of independently. So I've disconnected the transformer, and I hit my button, and the data from that button is going to flow to that channel strip, and you can see it working. And now, when I reconnect up my add one transformer to this whole mess, and click on the button, both channel strips are turning on and off. So we can see that this concept is working. So now all we have to do is expand it out for all 16 insert slots. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video.